Welcome to the History and Focus channel. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more videos like this one. Photo of the execution of the conspirators in the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, which took place in 1865. This was an event that captured the attention of a nation still in mourning. Among those executed was Mary Surratt, the first woman to be executed by the federal government of the United States. Surratt's inclusion in the image and the emphasis given to her in the caption reflect the public debate and controversy that surrounded her role in the assassination. There was significant debate about the true extent of her involvement, and many Americans were uncomfortable with the idea of seeing a woman executed. This hesitation reflected the gender norms of the time and the unusual nature of her alleged crime, intensifying the drama and division of opinions across the country. Photo of the engineers of the 8th Militia of the State of New York in 1861 during the American Civil War. It shows a group of engineers in uniforms in front of a campaign tent. They wear typical uniforms of the time, which include kepi hats and long coats. We can see the simple tent in the background, made of canvas, common in military camps. The scene conveys a mix of formality and readiness, characteristic of military engineers, who were essential for building fortifications and bridges in times of war. Historical photo of freed slaves posing along the banks of the James River and the Kanawha Canal in Richmond, Virginia, a location where slave labor was crucial for the construction of the canal. This canal played a vital role as a commercial route for the city. In the background, it is possible to see the ruins of the Haxall Flour Mills and the Gallego Mill, highlighting the impact of the war on the location's infrastructure. This photograph not only documents the significant contribution of slaves in the construction of essential infrastructure, but also serves as a powerful reminder of the harsh reality of slavery and the social transformations that followed its abolition. Photo from the collection. Photographic incidents of the war. The image captures a group of soldiers, many of whom are notably young, apparently so young that they seem unable to shave. This type of image was common at the time to bring the reality of the war home to those at home, showing to what extent young people were being involved in the conflict often before they had reached full maturity. American Class 440 locomotive, which was destroyed during one of the most dramatic events of the late American Civil War. In the fires that devastated Richmond in April 1865, many structures, including the Richmond and Petersburg Railroad Depot, were consumed by flames. The 440 class, popular during that period, was known for its wheel arrangement. Four leading wheels at the front, four driving wheels in the middle, and no rear wheels, which provided good stability and speed, suitable for the railroads of the time. Photograph of the preparation of the gallows for the execution of Captain Henry Wurz is a powerful visual record that highlights the deep tensions and emotions that permeated the post-American Civil War period. Wurz was the commander of Andersonville, a notorious Confederate prisoner camp where inhumane conditions led to the deaths of many Northern prisoners of war. He was tried and convicted by a U.S. military court for crimes that included harming the health and destroying the lives of prisoners, being the only person executed for war-related crimes during the Civil War. The image of the gallows being prepared, with the U.S. Capitol in the background and spectators watching from the trees, reflects the solemnity and gravity of the moment. The presence of spectators in the trees indicates public interest and the controversy that surrounded his trial and execution, while the capital in the background symbolizes the authority and justice of the federal government. This event was one of many efforts to deal with the atrocities of the war and seek some form of justice and national reconciliation. Historical photo of the camp of the Colored Battery of Tennessee during the Siege of Vicksburg depicted in Johnsonville, Tennessee in 1864. This visual record captures a significant moment, showing a unit of African-American soldiers who played a crucial role in the American Civil War. The Siege of Vicksburg was one of the turning points of the conflict, crucial for the Union's control over the Mississippi River. The presence of the colored battery highlights the essential participation and courage of African-American soldiers in the fight for the Union. Photo of a former slave, now a uniformed soldier of the Army of the Potomac, during the winter near Fredericksburg, Virginia. In the center of the image, with his hands in his pockets, 
he is alongside other federal soldiers, reflecting a significant change in the military policies of the United States. The inclusion of African Americans as paid and uniformed soldiers was an important step in the fight for equality and justice, marking their active and crucial role in the American Civil War. Photo of the Burn District of Richmond, Virginia, with the Capitol in the background, beyond the Canal Basin, captured in 1865. Richmond, the Confederate capital during the American Civil War, faced a prolonged attack by Union forces during the Siege of Petersburg, which lasted more than nine months. After intense fighting, the Confederate General Robert E. Lee's army was forced to abandon the devastated city in April 1865. This photograph also demonstrates the tumultuous end of the Confederacy. Photo of the ruins of a heavily damaged roundhouse in Atlanta, Georgia, following the Atlanta campaign in the summer of 1864. The destruction is a testament to the total war tactics adopted by Union Major General William T. Sherman. After capturing Atlanta, a crucial city for Confederate war efforts due to its factories and railroads, Sherman began his infamous march to the sea. This scorched earth strategy led to the capture of the port of Savannah on December 21st, marking a crucial point in weakening the South's war capability and accelerating the end of the American Civil War. Photo of Columbia, South Carolina, seen from the Capitol after the occupation of the Union Army in 1865. During this period, much of the city was destroyed, a reflection of the harsh realities of the American Civil War. The occupation occurred in the context of the aggressive campaign of the Union Army to suppress Confederate forces and dismantle their economic and military infrastructures. Photo of the grounds of the destroyed arsenal in Richmond, Virginia. The site is covered in bullet and grenade debris, testimonies to the intense conflict that occurred during the American Civil War. This image captures the moment after the city was captured by Union forces. Richmond, being the Confederate capital, was a crucial strategic target. The destruction of the arsenal, a vital point for the Confederate war effort, affected the military capacity of the South and symbolized the imminent end of the war. Photo of residents walking through the ruins of Richmond, Virginia in April, 1865. This scene shows the devastating impact after the evacuation of Confederate troops who set fire to bridges and supplies during their retreat under orders to face the imminent takeover of the city by General Ulysses S. Grant and his Union forces. The resulting large fire swept through the city, leaving a trail of widespread destruction. Richmond, which served as the capital of the Confederate States during most of the Civil War, witnessed one of its final scenes with this catastrophe, preceding the surrender of General Robert E. Lee at Appomattox just a week later, marking the end of the conflict. Photo of the Ringgold Battery, a famous artillery unit during the American Civil War, known for its crucial role in several battles. We can see the battery members in training, probably practicing the handling and operation of their cannons. They are uniformed, in line, with the cannons positioned ready to be used. The scenario is outdoors, in an open field, typical to allow enough space for maneuvers with the heavy cannons. This practice was vital to ensure effectiveness and coordination during actual confrontations. Photo of a pontoon bridge being used by a cavalry column during the American Civil War at the Rappahannock River, Virginia. Pontoon bridges, essential in military operations, were quickly built to allow the movement of troops and equipment over bodies of water. In the scene, uniformed riders cross the bridge, demonstrating the logistics and mobility of the forces in conflict. The photo also shows the urgency of the crossing reflected in the organization and speed of the cavalry movement. Photo of Lieutenant General Ulysses S. Grant, a central figure in the American Civil War, standing next to a tree in front of a military tent in Cold Harbor, Virginia. This image captures him during a significant moment of the conflict, taking a break amidst military operations. Grant, known for his decisive leadership, appears in full uniform displaying his authority and the weight of his responsibilities. The tent in the background serves as his temporary command post, from where he directed military operations and strategies during the war. The St. Louis was the first ironclad gunboat built in America, marking a significant advance in naval technology during the American Civil War. This vessel was equipped with iron armor, 
offering superior protection against enemy fire and armed with powerful cannons for river combat. The St. Louis was part of the Mississippi Flotilla, playing a crucial role in operations along this important river, helping to control strategic routes and riverside cities. The innovation represented by the St. Louis influenced the design of future armored warships. Camp during the American Civil War, where Union soldiers are guarding Confederate prisoners. The prisoners, wearing worn uniforms, are grouped under surveillance, surrounded by armed guards. We can see that they are in an open field or in a delimited space within the camp, with tents in the background, possibly used by the guards. This scene reflects the tensions and realities of war, highlighting the capture and treatment of enemy combatants during the conflict. This is John Brown, an emblematic figure in the American anti-slavery struggle. John Brown was a central figure in the American abolitionist movement, known for his radical actions against slavery in the decades leading up to the American Civil War. He was born in 1800 and throughout his life, Brown was deeply influenced by his strong religious faith and belief in racial equality. In 1859, for example, Brown led an assault on the federal arsenal at Harper's Ferry, Virginia, now West Virginia. His goal was to seize weapons and incite a slave uprising across the South. Brown was tried for treason against the state of Virginia, murder, and inciting rebellion. He was found guilty and hanged in December 1859. His execution received widespread national attention and was extremely polarizing, being seen as a martyr in the North and a terrorist in the South. Photo of Emory Eugene Kingen. He served as a private soldier in the Union Army. Soldiers like Kingen were crucial in battles and daily operations during the Civil War, participating in various conflicts and performing various functions, from combat to logistical support. Many records of soldiers from that time provide insights into their personal experiences, living conditions in the fields, and the difficulties faced during the conflict. After completing his devastating march through Georgia, General William Tecumseh Sherman's troops advanced north to South Carolina, entering the capital Columbia in February 1865. The arrival of the troops was followed by catastrophic fires, whose origin remains uncertain, not knowing for sure whether they were started by Union or Confederate troops. Despite joint efforts by Union troops and local firefighters to control the flames, more than two-thirds of the city was destroyed. Sherman, continuing his tactics of total war, ordered the demolition of public buildings that survived before his forces left Columbia three days later. These actions were aimed at weakening the South both morally and materially, significantly impacting the final course of the American Civil War. This historical photograph captures the second inauguration of Abraham Lincoln, which took place on March 4, 1865, held on the steps of the United States Capitol. Although the photograph was taken from a certain distance, it is possible to clearly observe the crowd that gathers on the stairs and in front of the building, highlighting the importance of the event. Notably, the Capitol Dome had been completed in December 1863, making Lincoln the first president to have his inauguration at the fully completed Capitol. The image also shows three men sitting on top of the building, near the base of the dome. This moment is historically significant, marking a period of national renewal, even in the context of the ongoing Civil War. Photo captured in Atlanta, Georgia. In it, a group of soldiers is seen resting in freight wagons at a train station. On the right side of the image, the office of Atlanta's daily intelligence or newspaper stands out. This image shows the mix of military and civilian life during the American Civil War, showing how urban infrastructure and media were integral parts of everyday life and the war effort. The presence of soldiers in freight wagons also suggests movement or preparation for transport, common in cities that were strategic railroad hubs during the conflict. This is the USS Monitor, an innovative warship of the United States Navy anchored in the James River in Virginia on July 9, 1862. This ship made history by participating in the Battle of Hampton Roads, fighting against the CSS Virginia, the first encounter between ironclad ships. The battle marked a new era in military naval construction, demonstrating the potential of ironclad ships in combat. The confrontation between the USS Monitor and the CSS Virginia ended without a clear winner. 
The battle, which occurred on March 9, 1862, was primarily a stalemate, with both ships sustaining damage, but remaining operational. Photo of the rebel fortifications situated in front of Atlanta, Georgia, during the critical years of 1863 or 1864, during the intense phase of the American Civil War. The defenses were composed of trenches and parapets built to protect the city from Union attacks. These structures were vital for the Confederates' defense strategy, seeking to maintain control over a crucial point for their supply and communication lines. This is a period when the city was under constant threat of siege. A photo of the floating bridge near Petersburg, Virginia, captured in April 1865. This type of structure was crucial during the American Civil War, allowing the rapid movement of troops and supplies across bodies of water. In April 1865, the Petersburg region was at the heart of the war's final events, marking a critical period that preceded the surrender of the Confederate Army, leading to the end of the conflict. The bridge symbolizes both military innovation and the decisive moments that shaped the history of the United States. This is Clara Barton, born in 1821 in Massachusetts, one of the most notable figures in American history, known primarily for founding the American Red Cross. She began her career as a teacher and then worked at the U.S. Patent Office. During the American Civil War, Barton distinguished herself as a volunteer nurse, attending to wounded soldiers and earning the nickname Angel of the Battlefield. After the war, she led efforts to locate missing soldiers and founded the American Red Cross in 1881, expanding her work to include assistance in natural disasters. Clara Barton died in 1912, leaving a lasting legacy of humanitarian dedication. Photo of the first Confederate troops inside Fort Sumter in April 1861. The attack on Fort Sumter, located in South Carolina, USA, occurred between April 12th and 13th, 1861, and marked the beginning of the American Civil War. The Confederate troops from the southern states took the fort from the Union, triggering a conflict that would last four years. This event exacerbated tensions between the North and South, resulting in a war that had profound impacts on the history of the United States, including the abolition of slavery and the preservation of the National Union. Photo, the Home Guard showing a group of uniformed women armed with spears, representing their active role in defense and support for the war effort. This representation not only illustrates the direct participation of women in traditionally male activities during periods of conflict, but also symbolizes broad public support and community mobilization in times of war. Photo of the Lutheran Church and Cemetery located east of Sharpsburg, Maryland, built in 1768. This site has a history marked by conflict. During the Battle of Antietam, the church bell tower was used by Confederate signalmen, leading to a direct attack by Union artillery. After the battle, the severely damaged structure was temporarily transformed into a hospital to treat the wounded. However, due to extensive damage, the building had to be eventually demolished, highlighting the destruction and permanent impact of the conflict on the country's infrastructure. Even during the war, soldiers found moments to relax and enjoy some leisure. A photograph from 1861 may show a New York regiment wearing their original uniforms before adopting the standard federal uniforms. These images are valuable because they capture the humanity and everyday life of soldiers, highlighting that, despite the context of battle, moments of partnership and normalcy still persisted. Confederate prisoners were photographed by Matthew Brady near the Lutheran Theological Seminary at Seminary Ridge in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. They were dressed in classic rebel uniforms. This photograph is considered one of the most iconic records of Confederate uniforms. Annotations made directly on the negative of the glass plate are still visible on the left side of the image, adding a unique element of authenticity and historical context to the photograph. This type of detail not only captures the appearance of the uniforms, but also highlights the photographic practices of the time, providing a direct window into the past and significant events of the American Civil War. Photo of the construction of the Tennessee State Capitol, located in Nashville, which began in 1859. The chosen site was an impressive elevation in the city center, positioning the base of the Capitol above the rooftops of most nearby buildings. 
During the Siege of Nashville in 1862, this building was reinforced by Union engineers and transformed into the main citadel of the fortifications that dominated the city. Notably, it was the only state capital in the United States that was fortified during the Civil War, playing a crucial role both defensively and symbolically during the conflict. In April 1865, Confederate forces, as they abandoned the city of Richmond, Virginia, set fire to the Confederate capital while retreating. Despite the efforts of Union troops to control the flames, about 25% of the city's buildings were ultimately destroyed. This photo of this event shows the charred remains of a paper factory, symbolizing the widespread destruction and devastating impact of the conflict on the infrastructure and life in the Confederate capital. This episode highlights the desperation and extreme tactics adopted at the end of the American Civil War. Historic photo of soldiers from Brigadier General Andrew Porter's staff in 1862. George Custer, who would become famous at the Battle of Little Bighorn, is reclining next to a dog on the right. Custer is wearing a military uniform and has short hair with a serious expression. Around him, other soldiers are standing or sitting. During the war, while the northern and southern states faced each other in a devastating conflict, indigenous tribes, such as the Assiniboine and Grosventre of Fort Belknap, continued their own struggles and traditions in the Great Plains, with their way of life being impacted by troop movements and settler expansion. Among their cultural practices, the Assiniboine and Grosventre occasionally consumed dog meat in ceremonies and special events. This practice, deeply rooted in their traditions, contrasted with the reality faced by Civil War soldiers who suffered from rationing and food shortages, but did not resort to consuming dogs as part of their survival diet. 